Mark Rogers TV back with you just minutes after Alabama pulled out a thriller in Death Valley 16 to 13 in overtime. LSU had this game in the bag after the TJ Yeldon fumble inside the five yard line but could not push it across for the touchdown. They really needed the touchdown there. My thoughts first and foremost about these two programs, these two particular football teams and these two head coaches. First of all, the head coaches are very different in a number of ways, but they're clutch. Les Miles a little less cerebral than Mr. Nick Saban on the other sideline, but the one thing we can always count on with these two football programs from the time that Nick Saban first built LSU and then went to Alabama and reestablished the Tide as a dominant, dominant program in college football, that they're poised, they fight. These are strong, tough, physical football teams. This is grown man football, big boy football, every time we see Alabama and LSU line up. And then also, they play in the clutch. So when they, they play each other, somebody's got to back down. Not necessarily back down, but somebody's got to lose the game. Uh, but otherwise, when we see one of these two play anybody else, if all things are equal, they're usually going to come through. These have been two clutch programs over the past five, six, seven years. Something in that range. So back to this one, Blake Sims. Remarkable on that last drive in regulation. Takes over the game, uh, needing uh, the 50 or 60 yards after the, the out-of-bounds kick that really set up the tide in good shape after LSU had taken the lead 13-10. to 10. So that was key as well. But Blake Sims was not going to carve up this LSU defense that has been exceptional, especially since the Mississippi State and Auburn games. Uh, with no help from the offense at that point. Little help from the offense in the passing game at this point, but still, this LSU defense is exceptional. It's young. They've lost more juniors to the NFL draft than any program by far in college football over the past two years and still produce exceptional talent and great work up front. Uh, the Alabama ground game is usually dominant but not against this football team. So it was Blake Sims. He was, again, not going to carve up the LSU defense. 20-45, 209 yards. Most importantly, did not turn it over in the air. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. And if Alabama moves on to win the SEC championship and go to the college football playoff, that final drive in regulation will go down in Alabama lore as one of those drives. Uh, the 22-yard scramble off to the right side and finding Christian Jones who made an exceptional catch to keep it off the ground. Uh, the final strike uh, to get the ball out of bounds and set up uh, Adam Griffith at that point with the easier field goal. Griffith uh, was three of eight, three of his last eight before that kick. So they needed to squeeze out every yard possible and they had 12 seconds on the clock so they didn't have a whole lot of time and got that one last pass that made it a much easier field goal at 27 yards. Uh, he ran for the first down on a third and long as well. Okay, uh, LSU's play calling in overtime atrocious, and this is one, my, one knock against Les Miles, who's been, again, done a great job at LSU taking over for Nick Saban. Uh, he inspires this team. These kids love him. They'll run through the wall for him, uh, and, and they play hard. And uh, he, he, uh, he's one of a kind. He's one of a kind. Uh, the game management, the clock management, not always the best, though. And in overtime, the, the first play call by Cam Cameron was really good. They set up Melvin Jones. He was wide open. That was going to be a big gainer, get them off to a great start to try to tie the game in overtime after they gave up the touchdown to make it 20-13. to 13. Melvin Jones, we saw it on the replay, didn't just take his eyes off the ball. He was headed upfield before the ball was even close to him. Basically hit him in the helmet. So that's that's too bad that uh, they didn't get off to a good start. So it was second and 10. Then they go up top to Malachi Dupree. And that was just a blind throw. It's a one-man route and no options there. And then uh, after the pass down the middle, uh, again, they go on fourth down. And Jennings gets flush from the pocket. It's easy to criticize. It looked like he could have ran for the first down, but he heaved it up and tried uh, to get Dupree. I think it was Dupree or, or Durrell in the back left corner to pull it in or get a flag, and the refs kept the flags in the pocket. That could have been called, but under the circumstances, you, you can't 
uh, wait for the official to bail you out. LSU could be one of the top five teams in the country with better quarterback play. If they just had serviceable quarterback play, if they had Hudson Mason, if they had somebody of that ilk, Matty Mock, uh, a good quarterback, solid quarterback, and I'm not comparing Mock and Mason, specifically those two, but you know what I mean. They don't need Marcus Mariota, James Winston. Decent, solid quarterback play. They might be a top five team. The defense is that good. And Leonard Fournette, as a freshman, wow. He is a workhorse already. 21 of 79 uh, in this game against Alabama. Jennings, 8 of 26 for 76 yards in our... Uh, Alabama LSU preview with Ben George a few days ago. I, I almost predicted that that line out of Jennings because this is pretty much what he puts up, but he needed the three big throws. So eight out of 26 is fine because of the, the great production out of the defense and the running game, but got a hit on like three big throws. He didn't have those. Eight of 26, 76 yards. Trey Quinn uh, got, a, got a feel for this freshman. Two big drops in the last six or seven minutes of this game, could have kept LSU drives alive, third and short each time, third and four, third and three, drops, just flat out drops. The second pass wasn't the best, but it was still right in his hands, and, and Trey Quinn with two huge drops. He's caught 16 this season, and they, they made him the primary receiver on two huge plays. Third down conversions, 10-10 uh, game, and could have sustained the drive there at midfield, and who knows what would have happened. LSU could have kicked field goals with just a little bit more yardage, or who knows, run out the clock. So anyway, that's the that's the shakedown right there with uh, Alabama and LSU. Of course, uh, the big Mississippi State game, one versus three coming up next week. Alabama has Auburn in the Iron Bowl as well to make their way to the SEC championship game. For LSU, this is the season of what ifs. Um, they really pulled together. They looked like a 7-5 and five team early on in getting pasted by Auburn on the Plains, but they're really good. This is one of the top 10 or 12 teams in the nation, and again, with a quarterback, they're a top 5 team. All right, LSU fans, talk to us. Uh, you've got a sophomore quarterback. You've got a freshman in Brandon Harris, so things could develop and improve. Uh, do you see that potential out of those two guys, or is somebody else going to have to be recruited or somebody else waiting in the wings? Uh, Alabama fans, uh, Mississippi State next week. Let's talk about it right here on Mark Rogers TV.